Dude, look how big he's getting. Look at this. Massive. He is huge now. Look how big this freaking snake is. Nice and perfectly safe. Look how beautiful he is now. Yeah, he is he's getting big too. He is great See, sometimes he acts decent. <laughs> Woo! Sometimes he's real quick and you gotta be on your freaking toes. Snakey snake. Look at that slithery. Little slithery. Little slithery snake. Little slithery, slithery snake. I'm a snake. Oh. Let's just get these guys some water. Oh, howdy freaking do, people. How the hell are you? You know the drill here. It's Tyler Nolan. We're taking care of snakes. Today. We are doing a little bit of venomous stuff with Senor Jacob over here, Mr. Jake from Snake Farm. So Jake has been doing this with me for years and years already. It's time for him to get back at it, right? Hell yes. Get a little bit more active with the snakes again. Had a little, we both got a little bit busy, both had to life it up a little bit, but now we got yes, some time, sir. baby boy. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a snake training session today with Jake. I'm just gonna give you a quick little rundown, even though you've been taking out the rattlesnakes and stuff like that recently, mm -hmm. you already know what you're doing. But for the sake of the video, we Absolutely. are going to educate people on how I like to do things, okay? This is not by the book how everybody should do things. This mm -hmm. is how me, Tyler Nolan, this is how I handle my animals, this is how I like to do my venomous, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody has different ways and different protocols of how to do things, with their hooks that they like to use, whatever the case is, this is just how I like to do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, I don't want to see any keyboard warriors down at the bottom being like, oh, you should do it like this, you should do it like that. Cool. Yeah. You can do it like that if you want. This is how I do things. So, today, that is what we are doing. We are going to show you guys how we do things, okay? Yes. So, first, I am going to get out Mr. Russ. I'm going to pretty much show you Rusty needs water. Okay. Kilo needs yeah. water. That psycho... Spectacle down there needs water. A bunch of a bunch of cages right now need water. There's some poop in some cages, so we got to do just a little bit of cleaning. It's not nothing too crazy. Today is going to be more of a handling video, whereas feeding. We're not doing any feeding in this video. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm going to hand the camera off to you, Mr. Jacob, Come and then uh, we're going to take Rusty out. Show you guys how big he's getting. Oh, and so since we're doing a handling video, might as well tell you guys. I tell you guys all the time what we use for hooks. Midwest tongs, okay? So this is the company that I use for all of my tools, all of my hooks, even from when I was a tiny little kid. The first snake hook I ever got, I was probably 12 years old, 11 years old, something like that. I still have it. It is somewhere here. So this snake hook right here, dude, I've had this hook for over 20 years, dude. Literally, since I was a child. Some of the first rattlesnakes and stuff that I caught in the wild were with this hook when I was a little kid. This hook has seen a lot of things. Bro, this hook is, I'm not gonna tell you the little secret, but this hook is really good for if you lock your keys in your car, you kind of just like wedgie this little thing down the window, you can pop a lock. It works great for a lot of different things. I've used snake hooks for all sorts of shit. Also, kids, don't go grab rattlesnakes. <laughs> yeah, don't go grabbing rattlesnakes. It's not really a good idea to do. Anytime you're dealing with venomous animals, you're holding receptacle, okay? garbage can, bin, whatever it is that you want to call it. You always want to make sure you have it in a good spot in the room. So that way, when you take the snake out of the cage, you can literally safely take him out, hold him, put him in the bin, put the top on it, keep everything super safe, super fluid. You don't want to be looking around for everything when you're doing this. The first step is to make sure that you're ready to take the animals out, okay? So anybody that's in the room with you, hey, snake is coming out, watch your back, make sure everybody's out of the way, make sure your holding receptacle, whatever the hell you want to call it, is in vicinity, lid is right there ready for you to grab. Sometimes you can start opening it with your hands, do the rest with the hook, or you could do it with your hook depending on how the glass is. I like to use the rubber part of my hook so you don't mess your glass up, just like that, okay? Now. 
what I like to do with my bigger snakes or anything that's a little on the crazier side to get out, any hide boxes or branches or anything like that, I like to take that out of the cage first. Just makes it a little bit easier for you to deal with the animal and get him out of the cage. So a few weeks ago, you remember I fed Rusty a gigantic Burmese python. Now it's probably been 10 days since that and he's already digested it. He's got a big old poop right in the corner. He's got a nice big old poop right by his water bowl. His water definitely needs to be cleaned out and changed. He's barely got any in there. So we are going to see how you are doing today, Rusty. Hello, how, sir? how are you, sir? Dude, look how big he's getting. Look at this. Massive. He is huge now. Look how big this freaking snake is. He's gigantic. Such an amazing cobra, dude. So, another thing that I announced in that last video that I made of Rusty was that he's getting a little bit too big for his cage now. Obviously, you can see this four-foot cage right here. He's growing out of it. Now he's probably, he's easily nine feet already, which is freaking amazing, dude. But look at how beautiful of a cobra he is. He's got great temperament now. He doesn't really like hood up and open mouth strike me and try to murder me all the time like he used to when he was a little bit younger. He's definitely a lot more easy to handle now. And he is growing very fast. So vision cage, Obviously, all my ca all my cages in the snake room are made by Vision. For the most part, I have a couple black PVCs that aren't made by them, but they're really not as good as Vision. Vision is an amazing company, and they make the best cages around. So, I talked to Ted last week. Ted and Stacy are working on a new order for me. Hello, Mr. Russ. And I'm getting another gigantic six-foot Vision cage. The same Vision cage that I have the big rattlesnakes in getting one of those so we're gonna rearrange how we have the visions in here I'm probably gonna take the mamas out probably gonna put the mamas in this cage take rusty out put him in a big six foot vision take a couple of these three foot visions put them over here probably make a whole new ordeal over here the ancillaris vipers are almost big enough to go in with the other ones so everything is growing everything is about to be moved into different cages and it's gonna be sick the other cage vision is sending me is one of those, I think it's like the model number 748. That big vision cage that Chandler has his lace monitors in, it's the same size as that. So Littlefoot that's out in that glass aquarium outside, we're gonna take Littlefoot out, we're gonna set him up in the room that I used to have Taruk in, in that other huge vision cage. So that way he has more room to grow and more room for me to interact with him a little bit easier. So keep an eye out for that video, those are coming soon. Vision does everything on the fast side, so hopefully I'll have these cages sooner than later. So right now I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna clean Rusty's cage real fast, then Jake is gonna take out the indigo snake, just to do a little warm up, we're gonna use a non-venomous snake first, and then you're gonna get Key Love out. You got that? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Snake Farm. <laughs> Mr. Jake from Snake Farm, you're getting Key Love out right after you do the indigo. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna get this water bowl out of here, I'm gonna clean this poop, and we'll see you guys here in just a second. All right, cage is nice and clean. What I like to do when I spot clean things, is I take their substrate and I fluff it all. So you just pretty much unpacked everything. Your snakes, obviously, are going to slither around their cages and they're going to compact all their substrate down and it becomes hard, so I just like to fluff it up for them a little bit and make it look how nice that looks, you know what I mean? Way better. It's not like super flat mulch. It's nice and fluffy. You can dig through it and all that. So let's take Mr. Rust out. So now taking these animals out is always very important. I like to open it up this way. I know sometimes you'll see me open cans this way, you know what I mean? It's not wrong, but the best way to open up a can is like this, away from you. So always open up the latch away, that way you have a shield. You see what I'm doing right here? This is very important. So say his head was right here. Now if that King Cobra's head was right at the top of this can, he could easily get me. So what you want to do is grab the furthest thing away, boom. That way you have a little shield in case anything gets hairy. Obviously, he's doing fine, so we can just go ahead and put that down, okay? Now look, he's just chilling in the can, just being a nice good old boy. So now the best way to take this animal out is by loops, okay? So snakes obviously are long, they curl up in loops. So what you want to do is you want to get him about mid-section. So right here, follow this loop right here, goes to this loop right here. 
So that's where you want to grab this animal. Halfway through his body on that loop. Come over here, get his body like this. Obviously, make sure that his head stays the opposite direction and he comes out not coming at you. See? Just like that. Pretty freaking simple. Oh yeah, get that shot. Sick. He's hooding up more and more. He's not too much of a hooder, but he's definitely displays sometimes. Look how orange he is, dude. All right, so let's put this big gentleman back in his cage. Look how big Look he is, bro. He's so big. Look at how big you are, Russ. Look at this freaking thing. He is huge. Oh my God, bro. He's growing so fast, it's crazy. All right, so let's get you back in here. Look how nice and clean your cage is. Yeah, look how big he is, dude. He needs to be put in a bigger cage absolutely a sack, dude. And even once he goes in that big six foot vision, he needs to be in a way bigger cage, obviously. These are king cobras. They get 14 feet long. This is the largest venomous snake in the world. So hopefully by the end of this year, beginning of next year, I'm gonna be able to buy my larger properly. I just gotta keep on grinding on here. We're working on new merch, merch right here. You guys can buy new merch very shortly. I'm gonna be launching the new merch website here soon with the new company that is absolutely amazing. We just got a bunch of samples in yesterday. This, this new place is awesome. We're gonna get hats, shorts, shirts, all sorts of crap. So stay tuned for that. But now, less mumbo jumbo more action so I'm gonna take the camera from Jake Jake is gonna take this indigo snake out the way that you would be taking out a Cobra completely by protocol okay put him in the can clean the cage and then it's time to take out Kilo the real deal so let's get this going so can close boom lid close hook of choice I like to go a little shorter that way you know you're not like here yeah, for sure. The only reason why I use that super long one is just because the king is just so super long. long yeah. yeah, you need to have his body a good bit away. Right here, a little bit of pressure. Open the rest of the way with the hook. Hands out of the way. Just like Tyler said, you got that loop. Go for the midsection here. So midsection, nice and safe. Hook at a safe length as well. Can nice and close. Straight in, watch for the head coming back up at you. Control with the hook a little bit, give a little tap on the butt. Lid nice and close. Oh yeah! Ta-da. Like Safe, your glove. Safely handled. Alright, let's get that poop cleaned out of there, get some, some fresh water. water. And then it's time for nice. the real deal, Mr. Kilo, that you even have on your shirt! Oh yeah! Kilo shirts, those Look are that. still down online. Teespring, go check them out. We're relaunching everything on the new merch website. So if you guys are still trying to buy merch right now through Teespring and they are not working, the link isn't working, they're just being a pain in the ass, just hold on for a little bit. In a couple weeks we're watching, I have three new designs for shirts that are going to be launching mm -hmm. and all the other old designs are also going to be on the new merch website from the new company that the printing is awesome, the designs last forever on your shirts. I know a lot of people were saying, oh, Teespring, like the designs wash off after like five or six washes. Yes, I know some of the printing companies suck that they go through. It's a third party company. So please just, just know that it's not me doing the printing. It's not me with the low quality prints, it's them. So this next company is gonna blow it out of the water. Even though these, these shirts are holding up still too. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, this yeah, has been through one, the wash for a while yeah, now, but those good. new ones are gonna be much better. All right, well, let's get this poop cleaned. Get the Zindigo back. And then it's kilo time. What we have here is very safe for the snakes. You gotta be careful using chemicals and like Windex and stuff. They have very sensitive respiratory, you know, issues. So what we do is we have a little bit of chlorohex. This is mostly water. We have a tiny bit of chlorohex and what this does is it breaks down the poop safely. It doesn't have a very strong ammonia smell or anything like that. So keeps your snakes healthy, clean, perfectly safe. <laughs> Fucking, you're doing good, Jake. <laughs> Talking on camera is hard, right? It is. It yeah. may, you make it look easy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not easy, it's dude. Like, that's not a human being. Yeah, it's not but easy. you are human beings, and I love you all. So. Yeah. <laughs> Talking, is. Talking on camera is not easy, bro. People don't realize that. It's half the battle. It is. Clean. Nice and squeaky. Okay, see how these vision cages have it set up? There's these tracks at the top okay. of these cages. Okay. Like a glove. Glass slides right in. Now, for anybody wondering about these visions, I'll have the links below and all 
of my descriptions. All the products that we use, all these cages, dive equipment, all that stuff. You want to find out what we use? Just go down below. Look at the links. Put links for everything right down below. The ink I use, the machines I use, everything. Alright, baby boy. You got a uh, indigo snake in this can right now. Yes, sir. So, so you got a fierce cobra. Fierce. Red fierce. belly black snake in this trash can, bro. Do not want to get bit. Shield. Woo! All right. All right. He is chilling at the bottom. Doing so great. beautiful. I love yeah, these guys. He's such a pretty snake. So look, he's in a beautiful figure eight. So what we're going to do is just grab the middle, like so. Not drop him. Try to boom. Nice and perfectly safe. Look how beautiful he is, man. He's getting big, too. He's great. All right, cool. Let's get that. Red belly black in that cage nice and safely. Beautiful. You yeah, like to do like a little tail shake, just a little tickle. Entice them in the cage a little bit. Yep. Bada bada man. Bada boom. Whoop. Just like that. Killed it. You survived, bro. Good Red belly black. Very dangerous. All right, so now. Danger. It's kilo time. Kilo. Now I'm pretty sure kilo is in shed. So just be a little on the careful side. And the thing with these these tubs here. I almost messed up once, remember? It's like, if you have them, um, what is it, like here, they won't close right? What's that thing, remember? Yeah, well, these latches right here, these you have latches, to make sure don't go they over They don't go over this are. little handle, because it won't close. Yeah. Then a snake will come up and get your finger. Yep, yeah, that's the only thing you gotta keep track of with these little brood containers, but otherwise they're great. All right, kilo time. Open it nicely. Get it high. Mr. Kilo. Get that night box out. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Kilo's yeah, like, hey, I'm awake, man. Alright, so this is the real deal Cobra, bro. The real deal actually owned. There we go. Pull the body away. Make sure Kilo's head is the only direction. Of course, Kilo's coming back in there. He's like, oh, man. You're going to get it. Beautiful. Kilo. Hey, man. <laughs> Wrangling. Wrangling. Wrangling Cobras, he's man. He's a little active today. Right? Yeah, no, Kilo, well, he's in shed right now, so he hasn't eaten in like a week and a half. So not only is he hungry, but he's just like a little on the crazy side right now. He's been crazy lately. Now that it's summertime and it's hotter than normal, he's a little, a little crazy. All right, Looks like he's already in that trash can. Lost an eye cap. Nice and safely. Give a little tap on the tail. A little tap and tap. A little tap and tappy. Put the lid on. It's like you know you're doing something. A little bit. A little bit. Had a good teacher. Got a good teacher? <laughs> nice. Alright, well, hopefully this teacher taught you how to clean snake poop really well. because that's. Oh, nice that's job. the best thing he taught me so far. <laughs> Get to it, baby boy! Before we put him back, Tyler taught me is don't have your gap too big. If you have your cage all the way open, you have your snake right here and you're doing the little tickle thing and he's going in. He decides to turn around, he's got a huge space. So, close that, close gap. that gap a little bit. Yeah, it's right about there. So he goes in and if he does turn around, you got another shield. Exactly. Nice and smart. Smart handling. Smart, safe handling. So, across the body. Boom. Hello, Mr. Kilo. You beautiful snake. As soon as he feels that little opening, he's gonna right go in. right in. A little tickle, tickle. A little tickle, tickle. A little tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle on the snake. Maybe close the glass. Boop. Nice Phew. and safe. And look, we got a Pepe that I blocked in. <laughs> Hola. Oh, hey, bro. How you doing, man? Long time no see. Welcome to the party. He's been fishing. Alex has been out of town, dude. You're so tan. What's yeah. up, bro? Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Pretending I live in Florida for once. You know. Yeah, man, you're catching fish, spearing nice. stuff. Yeah, you know, dude. Did cool you spear shooting. anything or oh. you're just regular fishing? No, we're just regular fishing. But, dude, huge hogfish. Like, I like, saw that, dude. 25 inches. Gorgeous. Yeah. Big hog. What else you got? Hogs and 
some grouper, a bunch of snapper. Nice. My buddy caught a big barracuda. Nice. West Coast is a little weird, but it's fun. <laughs> it's a little weird. Yeah, the West Coast is definitely a lot different. Than it's here. different. It's definitely weird. Yeah, everybody always says that when they say they're visiting Florida. They're like, yeah, we're in Tampa or we're in Jacksonville or something like that. I'm like, dude, you're not. You're not in it's South different. Florida. It's totally different. <laughs> it's like different Jacksonville way. and where we live, or even Tampa compared to where we live, it's completely different. Just think about it. Even Tampa, like their oh, ocean yeah. is completely different. Yeah. yeah. Totally different. Even the snakes are different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's shallow. It's crazy. Like I love our our Atlantic Ocean, Atlantic oh, yeah. Lake Atlantic. We high love energy you. Side. Yeah, it's the high, high energy. energy. Side. <laughs> yeah, it's fire. Definitely where it's at. All right, so last one up is this freaking spectacle cobra. The spectacle, he's big, he's bad, and he wants to kill me all the time. He's a Sri Lankan spectacle, and he is the biggest one I have ever seen. He's gigantic. I have another female spectacle up there, not Sri Lankan local. And she is very small, and she's not as crazy as this one. This guy is, he means freaking business. He comes flying out the cage for the most part. He's so nuts. Like, he is a crazy cobra. Look at this guy. Get the hood up your way, maybe. Beautiful hood, though. Like, look at the hood of that cobra. He's got all the white speckles on his whole body. That big, thick hood. Look at that. With the spectacle on the back of his hood. That's why they're called spectacles, because they have those two dots. They almost look like spectacles, glasses. Get it? Okay? Monocle cobras have one dot on the back of their hood. These guys have two, and it looks like a pair of sunglasses. Really cool snake. Super deadly. Their venom is crazy. You do not want to get bit by one of these guys. Well, of course, he's going to go backwards on me right now. See, sometimes he acts decent. Woo! But sometimes he's real quick and you got to be on your freaking toes. Like, see how he's starting to freak out right now? Chandler's got a video messing with this guy and he almost bites Chandler in the freaking face. It was crazy. All right, so let's get him back in the bucket. He just ate a couple days ago, so I really don't want to piss him off and have him regurgitate anything. So we're just gonna get him in that bucket. We're not gonna, we're gonna let him calm down just a little bit. Look how beautiful that snake is though. Absolutely incredible. Pattern on his skin, their hood. Such a pretty snake. He might be a jerk, but he's a good looking jerk. So let's get this cage cleaned, get him back in here, and then we're wrapping it up for today. Okay, nice and clean. Let's take this guy out. All right, he's nice and chilled at the bottom. So, we've got the cage cracked open a tiny little bit. Go ahead and get him by the tail like so. Of course, he's gonna wrap around my freaking watch. Back in the day when we worked at, when I worked at Underground, we taught Venomous, we always made people take their watches off just because snakes can just take their tail and they can go inside of your watch and then you're screwed, you know what I mean? So you don't really wanna have a watch on. It's really not the safest way to do this, but I've been doing this for a very long time and I know what to look out for, so. Let's uh, get him in the cage like so. Just put him in the opening, and they know where they're going, man. As soon as you have a cage a little bit open, they know that that's their cage, they know that's their home. They go right inside of it, for the most part. I'm not saying that works every time like that, but for the most part, you have your cage open up a little bit. Even sometimes with snake bags, they'll just crawl right into the back. They feel secure in their little area. So that's why your restraining tubes work. Yeah, restraining tubes, stuff like that, just makes it, everything a little bit more comfortable. Boom! All right. So that is it for you guys. Little training video session. Yes. Jake, you killed it. You survived. Alex, you're back in town. Yes, sir. It's time to get back to work, bro. Yes, sir. Time to get back to work. We got dive videos to make. We got shop oh, videos yeah. to make. We got snake videos to make. We got all sorts of things to freaking make, okay? Till next time, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Things you want to see us doing. Dude, we're going to Cozumel. Cozumel, bro. Fun. In October, really we're going to make a whole bunch of videos there. Like, we're bringing all the cameras. Might even bring another camera person to come out with us. If you guys want to come dive with us in Cozumel, hit us up. Email me, tylernolanbooking.com. You guys want to go on a dive trip. Uh, it's with Dixie Divers. I'll give you guys all the information. Just hit me up if you're really interested. Please don't hit me up and waste my time. If you're really interested in going... You're dive certified already. Please let us know. It is October 18th through the 24th. 
six days of diving, two tanks each day. They even offer night dives, they offer classes. You can even go and not dive. Just stay at the resort, five-star resort, beautiful Cozumel, beautiful reefs everywhere, whale sharks, manta rays. Dude, it's gonna be so cool. It is going to be it's so cool. It's gonna be cool. a series, a good one. Yeah, it's gonna be freaking awesome. So, till next time, guys. Boys. Bye-bye, then. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so make sure you're subscribed. We're almost at 400,000. Turn on those notifications, that little bell that's somewhere on your page. Click the little bell so every time we post a video, you guys know right away and you guys can just go watch it, all right? So, alrighty then. Bye-bye, then. Bye-bye, nope. <laughs> <laughs> So, alrighty. Bye-bye, then. <laughs>